Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you for subscribing and liking my videos. Every day, I share real stories with all of you. My wife and I met and got married through a mutual acquaintance. We were very much in love, but everything changed after we had a child. I loved my wife dearly and wanted to find a way to have the best of both worlds, so I started having emotional affairs. However, what happened next was completely beyond my control. My name is Jim, and I am 35 years old. My wife's name is Alice, and she is two years younger than me. After we got married, I used my wife's name to take out a mortgage on a two-bedroom apartment in the city. Since both of our jobs were stable, we had a little extra income after paying the mortgage and basic living expenses. Being in the prime of my life, with abundant energy, I didn't want to do anything that would hurt my wife or break the law. So, when my wife wasn't at home, I would secretly watch some adult movies to fulfill my own desires. I thought it was a good solution as it satisfied me without hurting my wife or doing anything illegal. One day, Alice took our eight-year-old daughter out for shopping. Being bored at home alone, I opened my laptop and sat on the chair in front of the writing desk in our bedroom to watch some adult movies. I was completely absorbed in the screen and didn't notice when Lucy, Alice's best friend, entered the room. She even closed the bedroom door behind her. It wasn't until Lucy intentionally coughed that I realized she was standing behind me. Ah! I blushed instantly and asked in surprise, how did you get in? Come up Lucy smirked and said, he he, your living room door wasn't closed, comma, as soon as I heard that, I knew my forgetful wife had struck again, always forgetting this and that. Before I could say anything else, Lucy continued, but I didn't expect you to have such a hobby. Kama and Lucy looked at me with a strange expression and a mischievous smile on her face. I felt my face burning and didn't know how to respond. Ha ha. Seeing my awkwardness, Lucy burst into laughter and asked, those women on your computer seem to be really enjoying it. Is it true, well, comma, after she asked that, I didn't feel as embarrassed as before and joked, you're a married woman, why are you asking me about this, a comma, it's because I don't feel anything that's why I'm asking you. Lucy put her hand on my shoulder and said softly, how about you teach me, comma, before I could respond, the bedroom door was kicked open from the outside, and my wife Alice's furious voice came from the doorway, what? What are you guys doing, comma, Lucy exclaimed and pushed me off her, quickly jumping off the bed. Caught red-handed by my wife, I immediately broke into a cold sweat and hastily sat up on the bed, meeting my wife's piercing gaze. Lucy hurriedly ran over and took refuge behind my wife, sobbing loudly. Wen Jing, you. You're back. If you. If you didn't come back, my innocence would have been ruined by your husband. Sob. Comma, as soon as I heard her words, my mind went blank for a moment. It was she who initiated it. And I uncontrollably placed her on the bed. How could she claim that I had taken her innocence, comma, I suddenly realized that I had fallen into Lucy's trap, so I shifted my gaze to Alice, desperately trying to defend myself. Darling, it's not what you think. Comma, naturally, Alice refused to believe my words and pointed her finger at me, scolding me harshly. Jim, you bastard. You can't even spare my best friend. Are you still human? You're nothing but an animal. I must have been blind to marry such a scumbag like you, comma, wife, I didn't. I was now at a loss for words, unsure of what to do. Alice angrily said, don't call me your wife. I don't have a husband like you. I'll give you two options, either come with me to the Civil Affairs Bureau for a divorce or I'll call the police, comma, since the property deed was in my wife's name, if we divorced, I would be left with nothing. Moreover, our child was still young, and I couldn't bear the thought of a divorce. I definitely couldn't let my wife call the police because if the police came, Lucy would insist that I had assaulted her. That would not only ruin my career but also destroy our family. With no other options, I had no choice but to kneel on the ground and beg my wife for forgiveness, admitting that I had been foolish and failed to control myself, nearly causing a major mistake. At that moment, our daughter ran in from outside. She knelt beside me and pleaded with her mother, Mom, please forgive Dad just this once. I can't be without my father, comma, seeing our daughter's pitiful appearance, Alice's heart softened, and she quickly pleaded with Lucy, Lucy, for the sake of our years of friendship, please forgive Jim just this once. If there's anything you need, please don't hesitate to ask. 
We'll try our best to fulfill your requests. Comma, and so, Lucy took away the only 30,000 yuan in savings we had as a family. I had initially wanted to find an opportunity to seek revenge on this woman, but she seemed to have vanished into thin air. I couldn't find her anywhere, nor did I have any news about her. Since then, my wife no longer allowed me to sleep in the same bed as her. She had our daughter sleep with her in the master bedroom while I slept in the guest room. Although she forgave me, she wouldn't let me touch her. My wife said she could no longer have intimate relations with me. Every time she saw my face, she would be reminded of what happened between me and her best friend, Lucy. No matter how much I explained, she refused to believe me. I felt that it was my fault for betraying my wife, causing her to have psychological barriers. Therefore, I would never force her or take advantage of her. I had made a mistake once and suffered the consequences. I vowed never to betray my wife again. I would rather watch adult films than seek other women. I had no choice but to satisfy myself by watching adult films since I couldn't have my wife's body. This kind of life continued for five years. In the blink of an eye, our daughter turned 13 and entered the second year of junior high school. Due to her heavy academic workload, we were worried that she wouldn't keep up with the curriculum, so we applied to the school authorities and arranged for her to stay at the school dormitory. Since then, our daughter would only come home and stay for two days on weekends. Although it was just my wife and me at home from Monday to Friday, she still wouldn't let me touch her. On this particular night, as usual, I started watching adult films, but it never felt the same as being with my wife. Helpless, I sneaked into the master bedroom. However, as soon as I crawled into bed and requested intimacy with my wife, she kicked me off like she had encountered a leper. I fell hard and painfully picked myself up from the bedroom floor, grimacing, and asked, Alice, what is the meaning of this? You're my wife, why won't you let me touch you, comma, why? How dare you even ask? My wife glared at me fiercely and said, if I hadn't seen with my own eyes what you did with Lucy, would I feel disgusted every time you touched me, comma, I desperately tried to explain myself, saying, I've explained countless times already. It was that woman trying to deceive our family and frame me. Why won't you believe me and keep holding on to it, comma, my wife questioned, that day, you had Lucy lying on the bed. How could she frame you, comma, seeing that my wife always acted this way, never believing me and refusing to be intimate with me, I felt a surge of anger and couldn't help but ask. Are you seeing someone else, comma, fuck you. Alice's emotions escalated instantly upon hearing that, and she cursed loudly, don't you dare have such dirty thoughts. I'd rather be celibate for the rest of my life than have any kind of relationship with a disgusting man like you. I find it repulsive, comma, her outburst immediately killed any interest I had left. Since I was at fault initially and had a guilty conscience, I didn't want to argue with her or cause a disturbance that would affect our neighbors. I sheepishly returned to my own room. Due to work requirements, my company sent me to work at a branch office in another city. I would come home approximately once a week. They say absence makes the heart grow fonder, so when I returned home with enthusiasm, eager to be intimate with my wife, she still refused to let me touch her, leaving me deeply distressed. After facing rejection multiple times, my visits back home gradually decreased to once a month, solely for the purpose of seeing my daughter. When I returned to the office, dragging my tired body and entering my living quarters, a sense of desolation suddenly enveloped me. I felt like the loneliest person in the world, as if no one cared about my life or death. How I wished my phone would ring, how I longed for someone to keep me company and chat with me. I sat on the bed, twiddling the TV remote in my hand, unsure which channel to settle on. I frequently checked my phone, but ultimately, it was disappointing, no calls, not even a single text message. In my boredom. I downloaded a chat application and started playing with the message in a bottle feature, where I could chat with random girls. Although it was just chatting, the conversations revolved around cheesy and flirtatious topics. We could not only exchange voice messages but also engage in video chats, where we would do things that can't be described. This way, I met many young and beautiful married women online. I found this type of affair to be safe, requiring no responsibility and devoid of guilt. I was content with my current life, even though my wife wouldn't let me touch her. She still loves me and took good care of our daughter, relieving me of any worries. 
Late one night, a female online friend named Adele initiated a chat with me. Hey handsome, why are you still awake? Missing your wife, huh, comma, yeah, I miss her, but thinking about it is pointless. I replied. Why? Adele asked curiously. My wife simply won't let me touch her. I responded, accompanied by a teary-eyed emoji from Adele. Then why don't you find a lover, she suggested. Because I've already made one mistake, I can't do anything that would betray my wife again after this introduction, we started chatting. She seemed to understand me exceptionally well and we talked about everything. However, she had one condition, she only wanted to find a soulmate for verbal communication. No seeing each other's faces, no video calls. Although this condition seemed strict to me, she wasn't like other women who were materialistic, demanding money for video calls. I had encountered various types of women online, but finding someone so pure and compatible was rare. I could confide in her about my troubles online. So, I agreed to her condition. From then on, every evening, I would join her in the chat room, engaging in voice chats where we would discuss life and engage in those indescribable activities. Adele had a kind heart and a pleasant voice. I could hear her voice every day, and not only did I want to hear her voice, but I also wanted to see what she looked like. So, I asked her, can we video chat, comma, no, Adele refused, I made it clear from the beginning. We can do anything online, except seeing each other's faces or video chatting, comma, I felt a bit disappointed and said, can you at least send me a photo, so I can see what you look like, comma, of course, Adele happily replied, but I don't know what you look like either, comma, I immediately retrieved a photo from my phone, one that I was most satisfied with, and sent it to her. Adele looked at it and smiled, saying, I didn't expect you to be quite handsome, comma, after a while, she sent me a photo of herself. In the picture, she had a beautiful oval face, big watery eyes with long, slightly curled eyelashes, a small mouth, and an upturned nose. As soon as I saw Adele's beautiful photo, I became extremely excited and praised her, saying, you're so beautiful, absolutely stunning, comma, really? Adele giggled and said, if you think I'm beautiful, make sure to keep this photo safe and don't lose it. Comma, don't worry. I assured her, even if I lose myself, I won't lose the photo, comma, after seeing each other's attractive photos, our relationship with Adele grew closer and developed rapidly. Apart from not video chatting, Adele fulfilled all my desires. Through voice chats, we satisfied each other's needs. Adele told me that despite her beauty, she was an unhappy woman. Her husband was always away and had other women outside. She felt lonely and empty, confined in an empty house. If you feel lonely, watch this. I found a short film on my phone and sent it to her. She said, I only seek you, I don't want to watch these messy things, comma, hearing her response made me extremely happy. At the same time, I cherished and fulfilled the precious moments we spent together every night, in the quiet darkness, engaging in voice chats. In the blink of an eye, we had been chatting for over a month. Tomorrow was Friday, which meant it was the day I would go back home. I informed Adele about my situation. Understandingly, she said, these two days, spend quality time with your wife and children. Let's not chat tomorrow and the day after. I readily agreed, saying, all right, next Monday night, I'll be there for you. Adele was so understanding and perfect in every way. I thought to myself. If only my wife could be as understanding as her, it would be wonderful, comma, the next evening, when I arrived home, my daughter had already come back from school, and my wife had prepared a table full of delicious dishes, laid out on the dining table. Our family sat around the table, enjoying the meal with great relish. It was a rare moment of a harmonious family atmosphere. After dinner, my wife said to our daughter, sweetie, your dad, and I need to talk tonight, so why don't you sleep in the guest bedroom? Hearing this, I was taken aback, thinking, why would my wife let me sleep in her room tonight? Did the sun rise from the west today? Naturally, my daughter was delighted to hear that she could sleep with her mother, so she clenched her little fist and said to me, Dad, you can do it. I winked at my daughter. Once my wife finished her shower, I entered our master bedroom with a sense of urgency, eager to be intimate with her. However, she rejected me, saying, you're all sweaty, go take a shower. I quickly rushed into the bathroom, took a shower, and returned to the master bedroom. By then, my wife was already lying in bed. 
I jumped onto the bed, ready to kiss her, but she pushed me away, saying, you must be tired after a long day. Let me give you a massage first, comma, without giving me a chance to speak, she turned me over and began massaging my back. To be honest, chatting with Adele and engaging in those activities every night, while also working during the day, left me truly exhausted and a bit drowsy. Each of her punches was perfectly placed. I had never experienced such treatment before, it was truly comfortable, comma, as I was enjoying myself, suddenly there was a sharp pain in my back. Ah! I couldn't help but cry out. When I realized what she was doing, I found out she was biting me with considerable force. I turned over, ready to get angry. She started kissing me gently and whispered, Darling, does it hurt? Seeing my wife's caring and considerate expression, I became speechless. My wife acted as if nothing had happened, continuing to kiss me, holding my head, moving down from my hair. Gradually, my blood started boiling. After a passionate encounter, she curled up in my arms like a cat and softly asked me, Jim, I have a question for you, and I want you to answer honestly. Go ahead, I won't lie to you. Do you love me? Thinking about all the years we had spent together, I didn't hesitate to say, I do. She smiled, like a ripe apple. Her whole body exuded the charm of a middle-aged woman, rosy cheeks, smooth skin, and a supple and full figure that drove me crazy. It felt like we had gone back to the days of courtship and honeymoon, passionately caressing each other. I still couldn't understand why my wife's attitude tonight had become so passionate, so proactive, so full of desire. I even doubted if I was dreaming, so I pinched my thigh hard and immediately felt a sharp pain. That's when I realized I wasn't dreaming, I was truly and intimately with my wife, the wife who used to be passionate and wild had returned. Afterward, I didn't feel even a hint of sleepiness. I lay on my side, facing my wife's direction. She had already turned her back to me and fallen asleep. Her silhouette was beautiful, with her long hair cascading over the pillow, rounded shoulders, slender waist, and curvaceous hips, igniting my imagination. Looking at her wonderful silhouette, I truly felt the urge to embrace her, but I never had the courage for it. I was afraid of waking her up, and she would kick me out of the room as she used to. I had to cherish these rare moments of being together in the same room. Slowly, my head approached hers, leaning against her long hair, smelling its fragrance, and listening to her steady breathing. She must be asleep, right? I silently wondered, and a wave of sleepiness washed over me. I slowly closed my eyes and drifted off into a drowsy slumber. This Sunday was the happiest day for our family in years. I accompanied my wife and daughter to go shopping, visit an amusement park, a zoo, and a movie theater. My daughter's favorite thing was eating snacks, and my wife shared the same passion. However, she refrained from indulging to maintain her figure and instead watched our daughter eat with a hint of envy. She redirected her desire for indulgence towards buying clothes and getting beauty treatments. I spared no expense in treating both of them. After having dinner outside, we returned home at 8 o'clock in the evening. My daughter took a bath and cleverly went to the guest bedroom to do her homework. Meanwhile, my wife diligently ironed the shirt I would wear to the office the next day in our bedroom. She was fully focused and meticulous in her tasks, with a slight smile on her lips exuding tranquility and contentment. A strand of hair slid down from her ear, gently caressing her face. The light from the ceiling illuminated her slender body, creating a halo-like glow, resembling a goddess in a painting. Having such a virtuous and loving wife and mother at home, I felt guilty for engaging in online conversations with strangers and indulging in inappropriate activities. Although I hadn't physically cheated on my wife with a woman named Adele, I had already crossed the line emotionally. If Adele were to suggest meeting in person, it would undoubtedly be considered infidelity. Last time, I fell victim to Lucy's treachery, and my wife had denied me intimacy for so many years. If my wife were to find out that I had once again engaged in an affair with Adele, she would likely kick me out of the house. I made a firm decision not to engage in any more online conversations or anything of that sort with Adele. While my wife hung the freshly ironed shirt on the balcony, I approached her from behind and whispered in her ear, Darling, let's cherish each other from now on. She let out a soft whimper, turned around, and kissed me passionately. Then, I lifted her up in my arms, treating her delicately like a precious piece of art, and gently placed her on the king-size bed in our master bedroom. 
the time to part finally arrived. The next morning, I drove to the office. Throughout the day, my mind kept replaying the intimate moments with my wife and the joyful scenes of our family being together, how heartwarming and romantic it all was. Several times, I considered deleting Adele's contact information, but I believed that every action should have a conclusion. So, when it was time to chat with her that evening, I planned to clarify things. Finally, the appointed time for our conversation arrived. I deliberately didn't greet her. Adele took the initiative and messaged, Are you there? I replied, Yes, I want to talk to you about something. Adele asked, What is it? I answered, We shouldn't contact each other anymore. Confused, Adele sent an expression of disbelief. I explained, because my wife is good to me, I consider this act as an emotional betrayal that is unfair to her and a disservice to her. After Adele voiced her respect for my decision, she voluntarily added my QQ number to her block list. I also deleted her QQ number from my friends list, ending our online relationship that lasted for over a month. However, my heart felt empty and unsatisfied. Late at night, I felt incredibly lonely and profoundly lonely. I thought about calling my wife, but I remembered she was already sleeping, so I refrained from disturbing her. From that moment on, I directed all my attention towards my wife, making sure to be intimate with her every week. However, after some time, my wife, for reasons unknown, started bringing up old issues, refusing to share a bedroom with me again and showing less interest in me. I feel lost, suddenly devoid of emotions, and thoughts of Adele start to haunt me. So, I found her QQ number in a chat room and sent her a friend request, but it was met with silence, and I never received a response. I wandered online, hoping to reunite with Adele, but she seemed to have vanished into thin air, with no trace of her presence. I regret my impulsive actions. Regretting the harsh words I said to her online, which led to her blocking me. On this day, I left the office, returned to the company for a meeting, and had dinner, so it was already midnight when I arrived home. I didn't tell my wife about coming home. As I unlocked the living room door with my keys, I heard indescribable sounds coming from the master bedroom. I thought my wife had brought some random guy home for an affair, so I cautiously approached the door and gently pushed it open. In an instant, what met my eyes was my wife wearing a provocative nightgown, sitting on a chair by the computer desk in the bedroom, chatting with a stranger. Upon hearing the door open, she hurriedly closed the computer and quickly stood up from the chair. When she turned around and saw the fury on my face, she became flustered and nervously asked, Honey, why? Why are you back, comma, don't call me honey, I asked sternly, what are you doing, comma, I. I'm not doing anything, my wife tried to defend herself. I saw everything, and you still claim you did nothing, I angrily questioned, tell me, who was the man you were video chatting with, comma, what? What man, my wife stammered. You fucking want me to catch you two in bed before you admit it? I yelled, tell me, why were you chatting with this man, comma, I. My wife realized she couldn't hide it anymore and made an effort to stabilize her emotions, unabashedly said, well, it's because of what you taught me, comma, what did I teach you? I asked loudly. My wife said without a hint of guilt, to tell you the truth. I am the Adele you met online, comma, what? I was taken aback, shocked, and asked, you. You are Adele, the comma, yes, my wife nodded confidently, when you said you didn't want to chat with me online, I went and found someone else, comma, I don't believe it, I shook my head, if you're Adele, then why isn't the photo Adele sent me of you? And why does Adele's voice sound different from yours, comma, my wife explained, I downloaded that photo from the internet, and I used a voice changer for the voice, comma, it seemed my wife had completely fallen into the deception. I became speechless. My wife remained silent for a while before she spoke again, since it has come to this, let's get a divorce, comma, upon hearing my wife suggest a divorce, my mind went blank, and I knelt down to beg for forgiveness, wife, it's my fault. Please forgive me, let's start over. Comma, no, my wife shook her head, looking resentful, we can't go back to how things were. Divorce is the best choice, comma, indeed, my wife was right, we could never go back to how things were, and divorce was indeed the wisest choice. The next morning, we went to the Civil Affairs Bureau to complete the divorce procedures. As I was at fault and the one who destroyed the family, I voluntarily left with nothing and gave up custody of our daughter. 
That night, I felt incredibly miserable, so I went alone to a high-end nightclub in the city and booked a KTV room. I drank and sang songs there. The captain who entered the room with me asked, Sir, would you like us to find a hostess to accompany you for drinks and singing, comma, yes, I nodded. Bring me the most beautiful hostess you have here, comma, sir, please wait a moment. The captain smirked mysteriously and left the room. After a while, the captain brought in a busty woman, wearing a revealing dress. To my surprise, it was Lucy, the woman who had framed me and caused the breakdown of my family. Lucy also recognized me and showed a look of astonishment. The captain noticed me staring at her and asked, Sir, this is Miss Lucy. Can she stay and accompany you? Are you satisfied? Comma, I nodded repeatedly and said, satisfied, very satisfied, comma, although I said that, in my heart, I was thinking, tonight, I will teach this woman a lesson. I will reclaim what I lost from her.